Hi, my name's Nick Chertle. Oh, can you hear me okay? Coming through. Uh, I'm a network engineer here at Meta. Um, I've also been part of the UK IPv6 Council for quite a while. Well, actually since 2014 when we, when we founded it. Um, and I'm going to talk about removing uh, v4 uh, infrastructure addressing within Meta's Edge network. Here we go. So in terms of agenda, um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time just providing an introduction, what our networks look like, um, what our motivation was for doing this work. Uh, then I'll talk about the approach, how we did it, um, and probably the largest section, some of the lessons we learned um, along the way. Um, and I'll be sure to leave a little bit of time at the end for some Q&A. Okay. So in terms of the networks we run, we've essentially got four, four main networks. Um, first I'll talk about is the data center networks. So if you think about these large data centers we have um, deployed around the world, um, you know, these are full of thousands and thousands of racks all interconnected with a big, um, big internal network. Um, next is a core network. We, a we actually run two core networks. Um, the first I'm going to talk about is EBB. So EBB, or our express backbone, is the network that interconnects all of these data centers together. So this network really is about very high volume traffic, um, mostly machine to machine between our DCs, and it's almost entirely internal traffic. This, this never sees the internet. Um, next up is the edge network. Um, so the edge network is, is going to be the focus of this presentation and, and where I do most of, of my work. The edge network's broken down into two main areas. There's the edge pops that we have. So these are facilities. These are sort of third-party facilities where we've installed equipment all around the world. So just about every, every country for which we op in which we operate, um, we've got a, a pop there. We um, peer there, probably with, with many of your networks. Um, and we also have our compute. So we have a, a CDN infrastructure there that serves up Instagram, Facebook, um, and some of the newer Horizon uh, products. Um, that network is th those sites are connected together by the second core network, which is our classic backbone, uh, called Classic because it was the first one. Um, and this again is a very far-reaching network um, and connects up uh, all of those pops together. We also have MNA, which is our meta network appliance. Um, so these are the caches that we install in, or you guys install actually, many of you guys, in, in third party networks, in provider networks. So not really a, a network itself, but um, I wanted to mention as, as a large volume of our traffic is served from those. Um, and lastly, we've got INE, our sort of infrastructure network. So for all of this network gear that we've got up here, we've got an out of band network. So this provides out of band network. Um, and it also provides console and that, that kind of thing. So very large network um, with a, a large span. So in terms of IPv6, um, we see 37% of our egress over IPv6. Um, and that's kind of interesting because it's a little bit lower than, than the numbers I saw earlier, but I, I, I double checked and this, this information's publicly available via facebook.com slash IPv6 if anyone wants to go and have a look because th there are breakdowns by country and other interesting things like that. But yeah, like in terms of egress to, I, to users, we see 37% by v6. Um, internally, um, I've put over 99%, um, and this is a, it, it's way over 99%. There really is only traces of IPv4 left internally, um, and most of that is actually a little, a little bit tricky to measure. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're well over 99% um, internally. For anyone that might wonder why these numbers are so different, um, obviously for the first one, egress to the internet, we're, um, we're reliant on other networks. So if the you know, network that's connecting to us doesn't support v6, or the client doesn't support v6, then we'll serve the traffic via v4. So the edge network. Um, so at a high level, this is this is what when when I talk about these edge networks, these are the networks that we've we've installed in third-party um, locations in in these cities, sort of globally. Um, Every one of them will have a peering layer. So this is where we do our peering. These are our PR routers, and they interconnect with, with third-party networks. We also have a metro aggregation layer everywhere. The idea of this is that we can connect peering and we can connect compute to a central metro aggregation to provide connectivity across a given metropolitan area. So 
you, you know, think that some of these facilities might be different, like physically different. We might, we might physically be peering in one place, whereas um, some of the compute infrastructure might sit in another location. So this layer kind of interconnects them. Then we have our rack aggregation layer. Um, this is where we're, um, as you might guess, aggregating all of the racks. So all of the racks of servers of, of our compute, they all have a top of rack switch, um, and that connects up to this, this rack aggregation layer. Finally, there's the servers themselves. Um, I've, I've listed them as servers, but you know, in reality, it's the, there are sort of containers and things. But ultimately, these are interconnecting with the top of rack switches. Um, and today, they are v6 only. So they're, um, the, the, the LAN between the top of rack and the um, servers it is v6 only already. Um, we're using RFC 5549 slash 8950, which superseded it. Um, to carry any v4 addressing we do need, um, but with a v6 next hop. So obviously, from, from these servers, we're, we're still having to announce v4 because, as you saw, the vast majority of our traffic is still served over v4. So at this point, um, a good question to ask is, is, why do we want to do anything more? Right? We're internally, we're well over 99%. Uh, v6. Um, externally, everything is fully enabled. Anyone that wants content via v6 can get it. Um, you know, do, do we really need to do anything more with this? So I wanted to, uh, you know, just take a moment to cover the motivation for why we care about this. Um, the first, uh, the first item really is about simplification. Um, you know, as you saw in that previous diagram, we had a lot of dual stack, so that's a lot of interfaces with, with both address families configured. Um, and having to deal with that is, is extra overhead. I mean, it's not a huge overhead, but it, it, it's extra ov overhead. Um, and at our scale, we generally, pretty much all our interactions with the network devices is through software, it's through automation. So if we want to make changes or adjust things, every single time we've got to consider v4 and we've got to consider v6. Um, the next one is scale. Um, for a long time, our network's already, the, the, the edge network's already um, exhausted what we can realistically do with v4, um, with having to deal with duplicate addressing um, and other things like that that are just causing scale headaches. Um, and finally, and possibly the biggest one actually, is the planning overhead of all of this. Because if we want to use v4 in the network, you know, this is a valuable and finite resource that is planned and forecasted. So wherever we're using it, there's an overhead in, in making sure we understand what the utilization is going to be, you know, looking, looking years out into the future. So what did we do? Um, really, there's, there's nothing revolutionary here. Um, all we did is these layers here, previously they were dual stack. I've highlighted them in red. Um, the plan is remove the v4 addresses, shut down, well, shut down the v4 BGP sessions, remove the addresses, and carry the um, any v4 VIPs and virtual IP addresses that we do need to, to communicate to the internet via the v6 BGP sessions. So again, this is RFC 5549, 8950. Um, you know, these are v4 routes, but with a, a v6 next hop. And it's exactly the same thing that we had already done between our servers and top of rack switches. So probably most people here are familiar, but when you know we've, I've been saying dual stack a lot, but wh exactly what I'm talking about: uh, interface configured with two IP addresses, one v4, one v6, two BGP sessions. Um, again, v4 and v6. Any um, uh, v6 updates will always have a v6 next hop, and any v4 updates will always have a v4 next hop. So with 5549 slash 8950, this, this is simplified. We can run a single v6 BGP session. Um, but you'll notice even the v4 NLRI, the, the v4 roots, they, have a, they now have the next hop of the, as the v6 interface address. So by doing this, we, we don't need to run v4 on those infrastructure links anymore. So one thing, um, you know, one question people might be asking, or, or, or you know, one thing that comes up quite a lot is, We've still got v4 clients, like the vast majority of our users are, are v4. Um, we've still got v4 destinations, because obviously we're advertising v4 VIPs. Um, so if somebody wants the trace route, how, how's that going to work? Because if we've, if we've removed all of the v4 addresses from the links, you know, what, um, how are we going to respond to those uh, TTL expired messages? Um, 
So the answer is, today, we essentially need to leave a v4 address on the devices so that we've got something to source the responses from. Um, so today, we're leaving loopback addresses on all of these um, devices. But in the future, that's something that we're, we're hoping to remove. Um, there are a couple of interesting RFCs out there, um, 8335 and 5837. Both of these are looking at improving ping um, and traceroute to, to um, essentially provide a little bit more information than they do today. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on these, but anyone that's interested, I would encourage um, you to take a look at it. The, the support in terms of vendor, and even, even within Linux, really, is, is there isn't a great deal of support at the moment, um, but we're actually actively working with vendors. We're working with the Linux community to um, to push some of those things forward because we we see that as a good direction. So timeline. Um, this was a smallish project, really. Um, we kicked it off Q1 of this year. Most of the lab testing was completed in the first quarter, so we had a lab environment up and running. You know, like this, this is all fairly well tested um, technology. So we got that in place quite quickly. Next up, we did a single metro canary. So whenever we roll anything out, um, this, this, whenever we roll any kind of change um, to the network, this is usually the next step after we've completed it, all the kind of lab testing. So the idea is we deploy the change in a production site serving production traffic. Um, we make sure we're happy, we make sure that there are no complaints, we make sure all of the monitoring and tooling works as expected. Um, and when we're satisfied, us usually this is a, a, a good sort of month period, um, only then will we move on to roll out to production sites. So we did that through Q3 and Q4. Um, Q4, very recently actually, within the last month or so, we've actually been able to remove the v4 addressing from most of the interfaces in our edge network. Um, we left that until late, you, you know, you might notice in the timeline because, you know, if we did need to roll back, we, we didn't want to, to rip everything out all in one go. Um, but we're now confident enough that we've actually just removed the addressing entirely. Um, the last stage, and a slightly frustrating one, and th this was really to do with um, vendor roadmaps and support in, in operating systems. but. For our peering devices, um, we haven't been able to get, uh, we're, we're still waiting on a, on a software release to allow us to, to enable 5549 um, between that and the aggregation layer. So the peering layer is going to wait until early uh, 2024. And then the final stage will be actually reclaiming these addresses. So by that I mean they're all still registered in our IPAM. So, you know, just in case anything disastrous happened and we wanted to, to, to roll any of this back, we can. But we're hoping by early next year we'll actually be able to, to free those up. So what did we learn along the way? So one of the first things we saw, um, and you know, before I go through these, actually, I should say all of these are very platform and vendor um, dependent, right? We didn't see any fundamental issues with, with the technology. It was more sort of implementation uh, differences between different platforms. So we noticed that a, a root learnt with a v4 next hop and a root learnt with a v6 next hop on some platforms could not be considered in the same ECMP group. So if you see here between our layer, the layers of uh, network devices, we have a full mesh of connectivity. Um, and we're relying on ECMP to, to balance the traffic up and down. Um, so if you take, say, router one, for example, and imagine it learning four routes with v4 next hops, and then you enable the configuration on one of those links to, to learn the, um, the route with the v6 next hop, what will actually happen, in our, or what we actually saw happen, was all the traffic went to the, um, the route learned with the v6 next hop. So, it wasn't really a disaster, we just had to be aware of this, and then a, a sort of simple bit of traffic engineering, and we were able to manipulate the weights to, um, to essentially prefer the v4 learnt routes until we were ready to sort of flip the switch. So this was a fun one. Um, th this, was, this was very, e even with the same vendors, um, th this could this could vary depending on, on the operating system and, and the exact platform. So sometimes if we remove the v4 address from the interface, the interface would refuse to forward v4 at all. That is, if it receives a frame with the ether type, the, the v4 ether type, it will just drop it um, unless we enable v4 forwarding. Um, so that was, a, that was a fun one, trying to track down all the different places that was needed. 
Um, another very similar sort of niggling problem was that the interface counters were not implemented consistently. So, you know, we've got v4 traffic, we've got v6 traffic, we want to be able to run these counters independently and, and track them. Um, almost, you know, we had all kinds of different combinations. You know, an interesting one was, I think one platform would, it would, uh, we could see total um, packets in and out, we could see IPv6 packets in and out, but nothing for v4. So we sort of had to derive the v4 traffic sort of in the, in the back end. So summary, um, the first thing I would say is that the control plane implementation works. Like we, we, I don't think we had a single problem with, with the actual, um, the way the control plane was implemented. Um, so the technology seems solid, works, um, you know, we're, we're running it quite extensively now in production. In fact, very extensively, all, all Facebook traffic is served um, over this now. Um, testing is really important um, because there are all kinds of different implementation variations. Not th This isn't that widely used yet, even though a lot of these technologies have been available for a while. Um, so, you know, testing is pretty important. You know, I'm sure if we tried this with a different vendor, I expect we'd have a whole host of separate problems. Um, and finally, I would say it's been well worth it. Um, configurations are simplified. You know, the control plane on the devices is simplified. Um, and we no longer have this sort of planning headache of, you know, wh what's our V4 utilization going to look like in two, three, four years? You know, that entire class of problem has just disappeared, at least for our infrastructure addressing. Um, and with that, I would say thank you um, and open up to any questions. Thank you very much, Chris. That was uh, excellent. Thank you. So I see a question down the front. Do you want to try your oh, I've got it here. skills? Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> Good shot. So I saw that from your lessons learned, they were mostly vendor bugs. Um, yes. How fast were they to solve those bugs for Meta? Um, <laughs> mm, so, so some of them were bugs that we could work around with their existing. So like, you know, the, the ECMP one, um, I would consider that a bug, but you know, we were able to work that around that with some BGP policy. So in those cases, it was a case of, you know, we, we, we can deal with it. Um, in other cases, they were pretty quick, I would say. Um, but the, the challenge we have is that, you know, even when they fixed it, you know, it's going to be a new operating system. It's going to be a new image. So we've got to test that, you know, make sure that we're happy with it and then roll it out. So that whole process can take quite a bit of time. But yeah, gen generally the vendors were, were fairly responsive. Okay, thank you. Uh, you spoke about trace routes. And how important was that to you guys to make sure that that remained operational and you had those loopbacks there? Is that key for your tr internal troubleshooting or key for you know, your external users who are doing trace routes into your network? Or, yeah, just interested. Pro probably a bit of both. There was certainly a lot of internal um, desire to keep v4 trace route you know, looking similar yeah, to how yeah, people expected. Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously, there's a lot, lots of different teams, lots of different support personnel. So yeah, I mean that that probably would have been a showstopper if we couldn't have dealt with it. Um, and in fact, that that is the reason that we still have. I mean, the main reason we still have any V4 um, on those devices. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Um, no other questions at the moment. You you talked about the reclaiming of V4. Did roughly, mm. can you indicate how much you are able to reclaim as a result of this? Maybe as a proportion of your total address space rather than a specific number? Um, I can't really talk about any specific numbers. Um, I can tell you we've been able to reclaim all of the addressing we were using <laughs> in, all, in all of our edge, edge networks. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I can't say okay. specifics. I thought it was, uh, I'd have a go. But it's, yeah, it's significant. Okay, are there any other questions for Nick? If not, thank you very much again, Nick. Thank Excellent. you.